watch and wait for Christ's coming. We light the candles of hope, peace, joy, and love, remembering the promises of God with prayer. We light this candle in hope. We light this candle in peace. We light this candle in joy. May joy be abundant. Hear what God's hope for you today. Rejoice always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Let us pray. God of hope, God of peace, God of joy, you are our salvation. We trust in you, and we are not afraid. Lead us to draw water with rejoicing from the springs of your salvation. God, God of promise, promise, God, God of, of joy, joy, into our, our darkness, darkness come. come. Let us sing, O come, O come, Emmanuel.
Hello. There we go. I'm rejoicing to see <laughs> some of you. And now, no mask. Oh, if I forget anything else, you let me know. But I'm so happy to have all of you here with me um, today. Because it, some of you I haven't seen so long, right? Any of you are here, good to see you, all of you. And um, let's begin the sermon with the first verse, the verse six, or the first verse, verse one of um, Psalm 126. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dreamed. There are two types of fortunes, according to the dictionary. One has to do with money, and lots of money makes a fortune. The other one refers to luck or the outcomes in our life journey. Who goes to the Chinese food and they give you that little, that little whatever cookie and you crack, crack it and there is what in there? The fortune, which is a whatever. I don't believe in that, but there is a fortune cookie with a fortune inside, which is a luck. It is something that tells you, oh, something's going to happen. It's going to be fortune. Sometimes it's not fortune, but it's the Fortune in the dictionary says it, it's like the outcomes of one's life, something that happens in your life. So fortune measures your wealth in both ways. You are wealthy when you have tons of money, and that is undeniable. And you're wealthy when you discover that all that God has provided to you in your journey of life, through your ups and downs, result in a fortune. Because whatever outcome is a fortune because God is with you. When God restores our fortune, like he did in Zion, we feel like we're dreaming. But God is not a dream. God is real. And God restores our fortune. Let us pray. Lord of love and light, shine through our darkness, bringing us hope. Help us now to know that it is okay to cry and help us trust you and keep on walking. Open our hearts for the journey, our eyes for the light, our spirits for the peace you bring. Fill us with joy that it may reveal the treasure of love with which you surround us. We offer this prayer in the name of the one who is coming into the world, bringing your hope, love, peace, and joy. Jesus Christ, your son. Amen. Let me share. First, Linda, can you give me my water, please? My mouth is dry, but let me share with you the story told by Pastor Robert Dawson, a, a Baptist uh, pastor, opening one of his um, written sermons. He said, I read about a pastor who loved to hike and camp. That was a love he wanted to pass on to his son, Peter. When his son was just a small boy, he planned what he thought would be an easy hike on the northern part of the Appalachian Trail. The journey would take them around the mountain to a beautiful lake in Vermont where they would spend the night. This dad made thorough preparation for the hike, including coaching his son. Over and over, he told his son, who desperately wanted to go, the hike is going to be tough. And it, it was okay to be tired, but they had to keep on walking. No matter what, they had to keep on walking. Unfortunately 
for both of them, the hike was longer and tougher than expected because instead of taking the trail that led them around the mountain, they took the trail that led them over the mountain, and it was steep and broken. The little boy repeatedly stumbled on the loose rocks, but he kept on walking. The hike became a burden and not a joy, but they kept on walking. The dad would occasionally remind the little guy about the lake and the fun they would have and would tell him to just keep walking. Fun was not the word going through the little Peter's mind. He had fallen so many times, he ripped the knees in his blue jeans, but to his credit, he kept on walking until finally he fell and struggled one too many times, and he sat down and started to cry. As he turned around to check on his little man, this pastor heard his son say, I know, Dad, it is okay to cry as long as I keep walking. Who here has never cried tears of sadness, grief, frustration, tiredness, discouragement, pain? I don't see any hands. Don't all these negative outcomes make us feel like giving up the hikes with the Father sometimes? Many times we feel like, there's no use, I can't do this. I bet that's, that's hard, but when we count our blessings or when we write all of our good memories in a piece of paper and the hard ones in another, we will discover the reality of God's word on Psalm 126 from verse 1 to 3. That the Lord restores our fortunes making us feel like we are dreaming. That the Lord fills us with laughter and joy. That the Lord has done great things for us. So, um, Carl, when you lost your Nancy, it felt, it felt all this journey up to here has been five years, going on six. It, it, was, it felt like you couldn't leave, continue without her. And then I have the permission of him to say something like this. But uh, once in a while you find yourself laughing and you feel like it's not real, it's like a dream, even though it hurt, but you, kept being, you became closer to God. You gained some amazing peace through that because the Lord is with you, right? So that can happen. We don't understand how in the world we can get joy. So in our walking together group, this man is the joy, <laughs> is the joy of the group. He, he managed himself to be making all of us smile and laugh because the joy of the Lord goes into his heart. All of us go through this. It is interesting, though, that we cannot see the richness of God's given blessing to us unless we make ourselves open to that vision, open to see. Last week, my Erica posted, and, and I posted on, on the Facebook, she posted um, an account of her experience with God's fortune or treasures. She said, and I'm going to just quote whatever she said here. I came across a video today, and actually I knew this song from the time I was a little girl. My mom was part of a choir that sang this song. It is such a beautifully written and composed song, dynamic and engaging. All of a sudden, I was struck, said Erica, with the sense that my whole life we were always relative poor, financially speaking. But the richness that we have acquired through experiences and encounters is out of this world. 
And only the Lord could provide this. So I started remembering several moments of deep richness that I have from the time I was very little. I could write for hours about them. Today I understood a little better that I never needed financial riches. As Dan and I raise our children in missions, a lot of times I think about what they might be missing out on. But right now, I'm filled with the conviction that I can disregard those thoughts and know that the Lord has and will continue to give my children richness that one cannot buy. Beloved, beside poverty and the simplicity of life, our journeys in our hikes, metaphorically speaking, can be really painful as well. So Psalm 126, 5 to 6 tells us to trust the Father and keep on walking in spite, in spite the pain. Verse 5 to 6, those who sow with uh, tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who go without weeping, carrying seeds to sow, will return with songs of joy, carrying sheaves with them. Well, when you shed your tears while you plant, two things happen. First, poetically, your tears will water the soil, providing a great harvest and bringing much joy to your heart. By the way, do you remember which Advent candle we lit today? The candle of? No. Joy, joy, joy. The pink one, see, I have all, I'm all pinky. The candle of joy. Second, when sewing makes you weep, it means that you are working too hard and you hurt. But if you keep walking, if you keep going and do not give up, you will experience a plentiful and blessed harvest and you will return with songs of Joy. But let's review the hike story as a metaphor. The father could probably carry that boy, but the boy would not give the ex- would not be given the experience with the same value as walking it by himself. Plus, he knew that the father was with him all along and would never have left him alone. Our Father wants us to get to the lake, the fortune, the fun, the whatever precious thing God has, the Father has for us. So the Father wants us to get to the lake, the unforgettable, precious, and life-changing treasure that awaits us at the end of each hike. Rick Allen, a British rock band drummer, had a car accident, and I just saw it on the TV, in 1984, and he had his left arm amputated. Though he overcame it, he continued to play. His journey was and is still very difficult. In the interview I watched, he was visibly dealing with the emotional pains of PTSD. His journey has not been easy, but like the little boy, even though he cries, he keeps walking. At the end of the interview, the reporter asked him if going back in time, he would buy that Camaro uh, of the accident again. He said, this is a very good question. That has made me grow so much and in so many ways. It had made me a better person. It has become a blessing in my life. He got to the lake. That's it. I do believe Mr. Allen, the drummer, was saying that in spite of the pain, he would hike with the father again, knowing that he will always find the treasure at the other side of the mountain. Oh, and his life has been filled with songs of joy and sheaves of blessings. Beloved, 
Your challenge for this week is remember that when you feel hurt, tired, sad, and discouraged, it is perfectly okay to cry as long as you keep on walking. Revisit, this is the second challenge, revisit your life events. Or metaphorically, your hikes with the Father. And try to find the richness that has been bestowed upon you after each journey. Keep the joy candle lit in your heart in such way that the joy of the Lord spreads to all who cross your path. Finally, if you pass someone experiencing some difficulties on a hike with the Father, please make yourself available. You can be used by God to alleviate the pain of your neighbor and also to lead others to the beautiful and precious treasure of joy at the end of each trail. Can we do that? Amen. Amen. All right. Let's sing. Breath. This is a new song, Breath of Heaven, and I loved it. I am everything today. I am music. I am technology. I am speed.
the Lord has restored the fortunes of Zion. We are like those who dream. May your mouth be filled with laughter and your tongues be filled with shouts of joy. May you say to all the earth, the Lord has done great things. May the Father keep the joy shining through you this week so others can be infected by it. Go now with the constant presence of the Father, the comfort of the Holy Spirit every time you hurt and need it, and the love of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, in whose name we pray, amen. Amen. All right, let's sing Angels from the Realms of Glory. You please stand, those who can. that you all came. I hope to see you next Sunday and the following Friday? Yeah, at 7 p.m. for Christmas Eve. I love you so much. I can't hold it. <laughs> Where's me?